So, um, hi. Hello. How you been? Again. How you doing? I haven't seen you for a day. <laughs> when did I last see you? Yesterday. No, two days ago. Two days ago. <laughs> I've missed you, man. We had a consultation. We did. Um, where Got a wedding coming up on the 15th of October. Is that what it is? It is. Not that's long ago. And we had the consultation the other night. We, we, what did we do at consultation? Let's talk about consultations. Let's talk There's about, yeah, there was, we, we hadn't Look thought that. about that. Yeah. Um, so, Magic. wedding consultations. So we we consult people, tend to be brides and grooms. Um, Brilliant. Well, that's that dealt with. It's then. important that that people know who they're who they're getting. Uh, so some people don't do the consultation; they just do all this online bookie, wishy washy rubbish. But because they really can't be bothered. Exactly. It's really important to know who your photographers are, as you know that you get on with them. But also, you can't I think from a photographer's point of view, also to know that you will get on with the client as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Got to find pretty people. Mm. Um. So we had a a meeting in a in a coffee shop in Covent Garden, where we went over uh, the albums. We took all our sample albums along. We got some A threes. We got some A fours. We got some A fives. We got some A sixes, <laughs> and some C sixes. <laughs> we got big ones, little ones, shiny ones, leather uh, ones. Uh, <laughs> leather ones. Mm. Uh, we should have planned this. Then we could have talked about and it. And then we could, yeah. And then we could have. Yeah, but uh, it's important. Why do we have a consultation, Pete? Why do we? Have, why do we do that? To oh yeah, I mean to to make sure that we're right for them, to make sure that we can work with them, which is important. To discuss what we do on the day, to discuss what they can expect from us, mm-hmm. what we expect from them. Yeah. And generally, although we're not doing an engagement shoot for this one, are we? But generally, we'll no, speak about the engagement shoot no, at the consultation like as well. No, I don't like do I. not doing an engagement shoot. No. And let me tell you why. It's because the engagement shoot, we, we view the engagement shoot not only as a, a tool for um, getting some awesome pictures, but also as, as a, a method of getting to getting to know the client, getting them to know you, figuring out you know their best angles, what they like, what they don't like, how to work with them, what they should expect from us, get them comfortable being in front of the lens. There are so many reasons why we do an engagement uh, shoot. I, I think, I mean, that's all important, but I think ultimately more um, important uh, than all of that yeah. is that you, as their wedding photographer, you will be telling their story. Yeah. And without knowing them... You need to know the story. Exactly. Wow. That was that's profound. That's deep. Mm. I was going to say, for the sake of anyone who's going, what are you talking about? We're talking about a pre-wedding shoot. We're mm. not shooting them getting engaged. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be weird. Although we do do Asian engagement ceremonies. We do do that. Where the couple are already engaged. We absolutely do do that. Where they propose again. Mm. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Come here from a wife. Not so weird that we won't photograph it, but... No, it's cool. It's always fun. There's loads of awesome food. And anyway. Lots of colour. <laughs> so, um... We we said we were going to talk about other things, uh, other than in weddings and consultations and engagement ceremonies. But it, uh, there you go. There's a taster. We'll we, we'll do a full episode on it. Actually, should we do a full episode on consultations and engagement shoots? Do you think we should do? Would people want that? Let me know if you want that. A live consultation podcast. Yeah. Where did you get that idea? <laughs> No idea. So it's almost like I've seen a list of of episode <laughs> topics, perhaps. Yeah. Mm. I think we should do that. I we need so. um we need a stooge bride and groom if anyone wants to play the part. So, uh what have you been up to recently? Where have you been? Uh me, I've been away. I went to Norway. You had a bit of a disappointment in Norway, didn't well, you? I didn't have a disappointment. I just had a moment where I was very tired and so I don't know if you remember from the last uh, the last podcast I said I'm going to Trottanga yeah that's right that's how you Where? say it Trottanga what does that mean Trottang I never would have known that anyway so I said I was going there and I ended up getting to the start point of there so this is like a really long hike a 22 kilometer hike um, and it's this awesome place that's all over the internet in memes you meme. say meme why do you say meme I don't say meme yeah, you do I say meme you sure Yes. Okay. So anyway. A, only a complete... Complete meme. Beep. <laughs> would say meme. Um, so I got there. In fact, do you know what I did? Tell us. I recorded myself from there. That doesn't surprise me. I took my uh, my Zoom H1, the little handy pocket-sized recorder. <laughs> so pocket let's go live uh, live to Dave in Norway. Thanks, Dave. So... um. I was meant to be going live from Trolltonga, 
but I'm well I kind of am because I'm at the start point um I saw this thing this place this this awesome rock jutting out above a Norwegian fjord and I thought well, that's cool I have to go but um I, I didn't realize that when you turn up there's going to be 400 other people there uh, and it what it's it's Wednesday it's 6:30 in the morning and there are 400 people I'm not joking there are 400 people here the fourth coach has just turned up and what there's like 50 people on a coach there's a car park with like 200 cars in it so perhaps 400 is a conservative estimate uh, I don't know so um my plan is actually if all these people are here and to get here I saw loads of awesome stuff I stopped a few times but there were so many other times I wanted to stop but I thought no I've got to I've got to keep moving to get here on time I'm going to go back I'm going to find these things and I'm going to I'm going to shoot them they're going to be the thing that people want to go and see when I'm finished with them because wow I mean this place is beautiful I was driving through a mountain, eight kilometer tunnel through a mountain. I had a roundabout halfway. It was it was cool. Everywhere you go, you have to drive along the edge of a fjord because the the mountains are they're everywhere and they're huge. So um, thanks for joining me live in Trautanga. I'm not going to be going to Trautanga, but I'm going to go somewhere cool and. Because I don't know where I'm going to go yet, we'll talk about it on the show. So, um, back to you, Dave. Thanks, Dave. So, <laughs> can I just say that was extremely corny? Well, you know, you know me. Something Extre- wrong, something, extremely something corny. Something wrong with the situation? I keep saying situation. Everyone loves a situation. No, you love a situation. I love a situation. And you get yourself into quite a few. I don't, I, I don't really. What, like going all the way to Norway to find something and then changing my mind? Yeah. So anyway, I got to Trolltanger and there were 400 people there. Can I just say that in that audio file, Mm. you do sound ever so slightly dejected. I do? Mm -hmm. How come? Is it because I recorded it about half five in the morning? I mean, that could be it. Might be that. Let's go with that. So I left Trolltanger and I drove through Odda, which is this awesome little town at the edge of a fjord. It's sort of the mountaineering, glacier walking tourist central town in southern Norway and uh, I found myself coffee wrote my mum a postcard you know all that sort of stuff and decided what I was going to do next and I had a little look on the map and basically I thought Iceland was cool for waterfalls turns out that you can't beat a Norwegian foss (laughs) you just can't beat a Norwegian foss they're everywhere and they're huge I've often said that actually you can't beat a Norwegian foss indeed so I found so many and uh, like you drive through the fjords and it's like you're in Jurassic Park it's it genuinely is it's incredible the whole country the landscape is stunning the people are friendly it's really expensive Mm. really expensive I mean travel is but there we go you need to figure out how to do it cheap and I I figured out how to do it cheap but it's still it's, it's, you should yeah, give people it's just tips generally on that. an expensive country well people can get tips on that if they go to hybriddave.com click on blog and there's top five travel booking tips Hashtag that tell you how to do stuff cheap well that's the point isn't it isn't that the point is it yeah okay. that's what we do look at my <laughs> other stuff <laughs> um, so yeah I went I went to Norway and it was amazing there are some pictures up on the old Instagram uh, talking of Instagram mm. pinch to zoom yeah what's that about it saves the embarrassment of. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw I'm gonna lay this one down. Go on. Saves the embarrassment of accidentally forgetting you can't double tap to zoom and then liking a picture from like six years ago. <laughs> right? Well no, because I still think that <laughs> Do you think that's why they've done it? I, I still think that, that you if 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 you're gonna if you now realise you can zoom, yeah. It's like you're gonna double tap to zoom. It's like uh, who moved who moved my cheese? Have you ever yeah. seen the book Who Mo- or read the book Who Moved My Cheese? Is it is it one for your kids? No, no, it's a, it's, it's a, uh, a, I think it's a psychiatry book or psychology book. I don't know, and it, it's, it's. Oh, no, like I have heard of it. I it's basically like if you, if you put, a, if you put, oh, this is not photography related at all. Yeah, but but it creativity and life, right? Exactly. This is life. So if you put a mouse in a maze yeah. with a block of cheese at the end of it, yeah. for however long, eventually the mouse will know exactly where to go 
for the cheese. It won't need to kind of guess what route to take. It will just know the exact route. You're picking up what you're putting down. If you then move the cheese, the mouse will automatically go to the last point where the cheese was, uh-huh. realise it isn't there, and go looking for it elsewhere. The next time, when it's in the same place, yeah. the new place, the mouse will again go straight to that new place. It won't bother going back to the old place, which is vastly different from humans, who apparently, on average, need to do things 27 times. Yeah, I've heard this. Before they Before it commit it like to muscle yeah, memory. Muscle memory. Yeah. Exactly. That's clever. Mm. So I so going back to the Instagram thing, people I think if people if people now realise, oh, I can I can zoom on this, double tap. Still uh, accidentally I've, stalk I've just people, liked that girl's picture from six years ago. Who does that? that? Not me. I, I would Ab- absolutely not me. Definitely don't get caught. <laughs> um, but yeah, what is it? So what's it for though? Pinch that because well, the resolution uh, is just the, the ridiculous. Res- I I tell you something. When I put a picture on Instagram, I um, shrink it so much it's ridiculous. Because I'm thinking you can look at it on a browser, but people are looking at it on their phone. Mm. So it only needs to be that big. Mm. It doesn't need to be any bigger. So I send myself from my laptop to my phone, the smallest file. Oh, see, I, I go large. It's cause, uh, cause on a Mac, you get small, medium, large. Oh, yeah, and no, no, no that's what I'm saying. I'm sending the large one, which is like oh, right, 600 yeah. Ks. Yeah. Rather than my actual Which is like 30, yeah, 20, 30 <laughs> meg file. So uh, that's... It's lost the load no already, point. but you don't need yeah. to because it's a tiny little picture. So what's going to happen when people start zooming on my pictures? They're just going to get very pixelated, poor exactly. resolution. So why why would they do it? There why must, do you need there to must be. The charm of a picture is is like me telling you what you can see. Yeah? My, let me your eyes and I'll show you what I see. Why are you looking like that? Mm. Right, let me say it again. Okay. Let me your eyes and I'll show you what I see. I get, no, I'm I get controlling that. what I you see. That. Whether yes. You can look at a picture that I took in the Norwegian fjord the other but day. But that's got nothing to do with you explaining and what's in the picture. What I saw of the sky, of the landscape, of the light that's cast upon it, the colour, tones, everything, that like the bits that I've cut out that you don't know I've cut out, mm. like the odd weird building and stuff. Do you do that? Power cables. <gasps> well, I'm, I'm controlling what you see. Oh so with gracious. Instagram saying you can zoom in now, I no longer have control. And let me tell you something. You're a control freak. I'm not a control freak. <laughs> I just, I'm just a bit of a control Control. Someone who likes to so be anyway. control. <laughs> but you, do you get my point? Uh, to a certain degree, yes. Uh, but again, I mean, going back to uh, the whole point of it, I don't see the whole point of it. There, I, I'm wondering whether it's very rare for Facebook to release a because obviously it's owned by Facebook now. Yeah. It's very rare for Facebook to release a feature like this that hasn't been trialed to death, yeah, yeah. and it seems like it's just been released on a whim. It does. So I'm just wondering whether there I is wonder some if it's because ulterior of motive about stalkers. I, do, I genuinely think that oh, that's got know. something to do with it. I don't know the the double tap situation. But I, I, I don't think Facebook would really care that much about because ultimately mm. what you're going you're going to double tap on a picture to zoom and you're going to like it. I mean, what's? Mm. Mm. But yeah, I don't I don't get no, it. I, mm. But so who knows, you who can knows, pinch to zoom on Instagram now. Next week, a few weeks or that's, months. That's news, right? That's newsworthy podcast that's information. So. What else is going on in the world? We're on phones. We're on phones now. We've gone to Instagram. We're on phones. What else is going on? Uh, in the world of phones. Well, oh, I, s- ah, ah. I saw a, a leaked report the other day, and you never know how much credence to give these things. The iPhone 7 yeah. will apparently have dual cameras and a four LED flash. Now, I'm a big... And be fa- waterproof. Oh, that's good. Mm. Because you like to drop your phone in the toilet. Anything. I like <laughs> to drop my phone everywhere. I'm surprised at how few screens I go through. Um, so I'm a big Apple fan. We're both Apple fanboys. Mm-hmm. Um, we're rocking every device you can think of. But now, uh, Apple does need to catch up in some things. Mm. I'm not complaining about the current setup, but there are phones that have had dual cameras for a while, that have had duotone flashes and all kinds of things going on. So, what I want, what, what's this? Why are they? What I want is raw capability. Yeah, I'd like that. Which LG? And but you need you need a big megapixels, really, to capture as much detail as you can. Because let's let's, let's be real, the mega megapixel race in real cameras is is over. Uh-huh. It's not about that anymore. It's about how you can deal with ISO uh-huh. and how you can do. Uh, it's various other things, but. You want more megapixels. Mm -hmm. With the tiny little sensor in your phone, you want megapixels. So you've got maximum control over over your image. Mm. Although that said, that said, literally just before we came on air, and yes, I said literally before we came on air, um, 
I saw a news article, Hasselblad yeah. have just released a device that snaps onto your phone mm. and shoots raw images. Ha- what do you mean? How does it do that? Snaps onto your what? Like it clips onto your well, physically like an attachment, a camera yeah, attachment, a camera attachment for your phone. I guess it Whoa. uses near field or Bluetooth to transfer the pictures straight to your. Because a little Whoa. while ago, didn't Olympus or Fuji have like a little barrel lens there's, that you could attach? There's been a few things going on, but I don't think any of them have really been a success. And it was a stand. It was a standalone lens. I think but the you biggest could connect it to your the biggest your deal that you've that's, that's worked recently has been just add-on lenses, clip-on lenses, like Olio clip yeah, and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. There's a plug. Olio. Olio. Very, very good. No, so genuinely, again, they are again, very good. Say again. Olio. Right. So, I, I, d- I do like clip-on lenses on my phone. However, I haven't used them for ages. I don't mm. know why. I think they just need to get the phone on the camera right, rather yeah. than having all this stuff going on. I do like the wide angle. I do like the fish eye. And I do like the telephoto that I have that a clip-on. Mm. But I, I just I can't be bothered carrying them around and finding them. I carry enough stuff around for the DSLRs. Mm. I don't want any more. I just want them to get the phone right. Is that bad? You listening, Tim? Do Tim think, Cook? Do you think he is? Probably. Well, he's got to review the podcast before it goes on. That's up. very true, actually. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably is. I'm sure. Do it's you think him. it's him just like sat in a dark yeah, basement reviewing yeah, yeah, yeah. every podcast that goes on iTunes? Yeah, of course, just to make sure we don't swear. And he's got nothing else to do with these days, has he? Yeah. So, um, I mean, w- this is episode two of the Hybrid Photography Podcast. Which, bizarrely, is actually the third one we've done. Yeah, because the pilot doesn't count. Does it not? No. See, that confuses me. Yeah, but that's... That's like in America like where the first floor is the is ground, the ground floor. floor. That's weird. I can't <laughs> do that. Second floor. First floor. Second floor. Is hang the on, third floor. Go. No, hang on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, now we've lost yeah. it. Hang on. I need some beer. Your turn. Mm. Um. So, talking about what's new in the world of photography we could talk about what's new with us in the world of photography oh right and that is what? that in approximately what's the date today whenever it is what, what we're we're <laughs> next week but yeah in about <laughs> on yeah, the 14th, a week and a half on the 13th what 14th? on the 13th it's the 14th for the 13th did you book the right flight we're flying out on the 13th did you, hang on a minute did you book the right flight right here we go folks it's the 14th right we're flying out on the 13th of september which is a tuesday and we're coming back on the 14th, on the 13th. which is a Wednesday. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, we are flying out to... So that's to nine days from now, so it's like two days from the podcast. We are flying out so to Belfast. So it's two days from now. <laughs> two, two, in two days from now... We still need to get our head around this. Yeah. Uh, we'll be on the ground floor, which is the... Fir- no, for in nine days, two days from now, we're going to yeah. be flying out to Belfast. 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 That is not... How many R's are we going to be in Belfast. 30? Yeah, it's probably about right. About, about that. So, basically, what's happening is I decided, you know, like I did with Norway, and I saw this rock, and I thought, oh, that's a pretty rock, and I booked a flight. I, I did much the same thing, but with a tree. Uh, in Nor- in a lot of trees. Ireland, there's, there's some trees. Called? Beach trees, I think. The dark hedges. And so it sounds I, like a Harry Potter episode. Yeah, well, it probably do, would do, fit do, quite do, right. Do, 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 do. <laughs> do, do, do. Anyway, go on. Smooth. <laughs> um, so I, I decided I'm going to Ireland to find these trees because yeah. they look pretty. And, and I'm gate crashing. And Pete decided he's coming. <laughs> <laughs> because I was given permission. And then someone else decided they're coming. Yeah, but we can't say we who. can't say much <gasps> yet because this person. It's going to be. Okay, uh, this is an Irish photographer. We can mm. say that. Yeah, yeah. But he or she. Nah. Yeah, see what I did there? Is going to be our very, very special guest. We're going to do a, uh, a, a live on. On location. Indeed. Outside broadcast. Oh, outside mm? broadcast. Mm, you like that? Oh, that's good. So we're going to do and a And it'll probably be in a pub. F- it will probably be in a pub. We're going to do a broadcast from Ireland, uh, Northern Ireland. We're going to, on the on the trip, we're going to drive out from Belfast. We're going to leave as fast as we can, get into the countryside, go Belfast. to the dark. Belfast. You've got to say it like that. Belfast. Belfast. Oh, that's actually a s- Republic accent. I was going to say, anyway. it doesn't Belfast. sound... Belfast. Like ah, come on, no... <laughs> Hi, no, Brian Kai. I'm not going <laughs> to embarrass yourself. I'd rather do languages than accents. Um, what, like Trolltunga? Trolltunga. Yeah. That's an accent. Yeah. Okay. It's how they say it. But it's in the language. Because if I were to say it in English with an accent, I would just be saying Trolltung with an accent. Let's get on with the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
and then we're going to go to the Dark Hedges. We're going to have a little mooch about. We're going to go further west, find the coast. Uh, the, the Giant's Causeway there. Did you know this? It's not about it's about there. Not on the west side, it isn't. West side, in it. But it is because if you go too far west in Northern Ireland, you end up in Ireland. the Republic of Ireland. <laughs> That's fine. In Donegal. That's well, they sound much the same, and I'm going to get slaughtered for saying that. But that it's fine. I, I'm quite happy to cross stretch border. the borders. Um, I want to find countryside. I want to find some awesome stuff. <coughs> While we're there, we only have one sunset and one sunrise. Guess what that means? No sleep. I mean, I'm. You need to keep up. Y- yeah, I mean, I'm used to it now. Australia, Germany. So I've uh, when I go away, when I go away and I go away a lot. I've been away. It's oh, September. I've been away sixteen times this year, so far. Sixteen I've got holidays. Three more planned. Sixteen holidays. Holidays. <laughs> Shut up. So I've been away sixteen times doing travel photography. I've got three more trips planned, and that only takes me up until the beginning of November. So I need to squeeze in a couple more. But anyway, my point is, I try to go on my own as much as I can. This year, I've only had company on uh, a couple of trips. One being Iceland with John. John from the Apple. John Parry. John Parry. Ledge. Good man. Um, John, you, we need to go for a coffee. And uh, I took Pete. <laughs> I say I took Pete. Pete and I went together to the US. Mm. And that's it. Every other time I've been on my own. And I'm quite happy going on my own because I can set the pace. I can decide where I'm going to go, what I'm going to do, etc. Et so had, I say quite we've often, had people some need to keep up. If we've had come some with. tetchy moments. We have. Being away. We have. Because Dave, you can't keep up. Dave gets quite serious. Okay, you know, you go for this. <laughs> You've got this. Go on. <laughs> I'm going to turn my microphone off so um, that I can't interject because I will. Yeah. Dave Dave gets Dave gets quite serious with these photos. And so I'll, oh, yeah, I'm serious. We're taking pictures. But um, Dave, Dave takes it to another level. Don't you, Dave? You can interject now. Is that it? Yeah. It's because people I don't can't, don't people can't keep too up. Much. And so what? I'm quite happy. Like, if I have a significant other, that's that's a different story altogether. Pourquoi? Because I can just, I can be like, I'm going to go do this. You know, put her in a spa or something. <laughs> <laughs> put her in a <laughs> spa. Find me a woman that's going to complain about that. I want to go take a photo of Sunrise. I'll make you breakfast when I get back. Find me someone that's not that's going to moan about that. Right. Do you see? My oh, sorry. Is, is is this a classified? So you want me? To, you actually want me to find your woman? I'm good. No. I'm okay. Good. I'm good. So, do you see my point though? If you can't keep up, I'll find a way to sort that situation out. Mm. However, if it's you, however, excuse me, however, however, what? that's how they say it in Belfast. However. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, there might be a few of these. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, I, uh, my point is, I, I like to... Take yourself seriously. I like to set the pace. Mm-hmm. And I like to... The, the, I think the actual I think the problem link I was have we only have one sunset yeah, and yeah. one sunrise. But I think, I think the problem I have, and but I'm sort of getting over it now. we still have to do a podcast. I get that. We're going to be drinking and driving, so we need to have enough so time what? between the drinking and what? driving. No, listen to the whole what? sentence. Okay, all right. We need to have enough time between the drinking and the driving. Mm. Um... I'm the only one on the hire car at present, unless we sort that out when we get there. I'm good with that. <laughs> so, yeah. Just like I was good with you driving from San Francisco to Vegas. All the way. All the way. <laughs> All the way. <sighs> so Everyone loves a bit of Frank. What else? Did, have you looked at what, what you might want to do in Ireland? No, actually, because oh, I know there's no point. My Lonely Planet came, I'm just going to say. Oh, hashtag Lonely Planet. Everywhere I go, I do a Lonely Planet international coffee hunt. and Oh, and I, I'm doing a tea and muffin hunt. <laughs> You've done one that's, picture. That's <laughs> that, started, in Vegas, that started all, in Vegas. Of all places, at the Sunrise You Cafe? didn't continue it in New York. I didn't, did I? No. It's disappointing. <laughs> you didn't remind me. What, what's that all about? You're je- uh, I think he's jealous of my tea and muffin hunt. Yeah, no, I'm seriously jealous. <laughs> so anyway, Lonely Planet. I'm a Lonely Planet Pathfinder, which means I'm one of their people that t- tells stories about the world and shows you things. And um, I, I suppose you could call it a, cr- a contributor. Um, one of the things I do is I share coffee from around the world. Everywhere I go around the world, I share a Lonely Planet and a coffee together. And I, I like my coffee. Oh, I've not kept up way. with this recently. Why not? Well, well, because I've got better things to do. Um, Excuse me? No. <laughs> it's the best coffee you've ever still had, ever had. Jungle still. Juice, Melbourne. Yeah, absolutely. I was there. Yeah, 
I was with you. Man, John that's quite emotional. Coffee. That's the best coffee I've ever had. Um, best coffee in the world. Melbourne, Australia, Jungle Juice. It's in Laneways. In the lanes. In the lane. It's Laneways. Laneways. Yeah. Mm. Get it right. So there's this year's coffees. There you go. There's uh, here I we was go. throwing my phone across to him. Dustly. Dustly. Well, it's not dustly because people can't see. Uh, but I can. All right. So I've thrown my coffee over to him. Now, best coffee this year has been... Hmm... Do you know, I don't know. They've all been pretty... Well, that's that's interesting. Okay, let me tell you. The, uh, my least favourite place that I visited this year was Sofia, Bulgaria. Least favourite? My oh, wasn't favorite that where you coffee? found the drunk security guards in yeah, the park? Yeah. And a pack of that. dogs? My favourite coffee. There are two favourite coffees this year, and one of them is actually the one from Sofia. The other one... What a... What a how strange. What a strange oh, situation. Oh, very strange. I think the other one is going to be the Sweden one. Uh, do you know why it was the Sweden one? Tell me. I, I can't remember. Oh, hang on. Was it Sweden? No, I didn't go to Sweden. <laughs> That's gone the well, isn't it? The life of a travel photographer. No, I did go to Sweden. I went to Malmo. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think the best one was Malmo, and I can remember it now. I'm sitting outside on the street in Malmo, uh, or Malmo, something like that. And um, Malm. Well, it's M A L M O. It sounds like an O-R, idea. The O's got an umlaut, which tends to suggest that the O goes U. Uh, so it's Malmo. Malmo. It sounds like a, an it's IKEA bedside the, it's table. The one with the twisting torso building. Oh, I saw the picture. And nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it sounds like an IKEA bedside table. It does. A Melma. Can a I Melma. have two Melmas, please? Yeah. Be to go with my schlur sh- sh- bed. <laughs> <laughs> um. So anyway, the point is, I was sat outside and and it was a thick syrup, like not syrupy, but it was a thick mocha with like, you know how, I don't know if you do actually. Um, in in certain countries, if you have a hot chocolate, Italy being one of them, you literally get milk and chocolate cooked together. Mm-hmm. It's incredible. It's really rich and it's nice. Sounds it. It was one of them. Throw an espresso in it. It was Oof. nice. It was really good. I can't remember the name of the place. I can see it. That's my disappointing. Head. You remember Jungle Juice in Melbourne? I remember Jungle Juice. That's because it's 10 out of 10. It's the only 10 out of 10. See, see, again, when you told me that at the time, I was dubious. Mm. Because what happens now if you find a better coffee? Than the 10 out of 10? Mm. Do you know, I haven't thought that through. No, I didn't think you had. Are you going to create a new scale? The Williams scale? The Williams. It will be the international standard by which coffee is measured. Mm. Which is the Williams scale. And if if you get highest... And then they find another one. We just amend the scale. <laughs> That's all that happens. Like Kenwood, you just turn it to 11. Yeah, exactly. Right. 11 out of 10. Mm. W- what's wrong with that? Well, it's, it, that's fine until you find another one that's yet better than that. I don't know where to go with this. Now. Mm. No. Anyway, what else is coming up? Well, uh, we've got the World by Photo Walk. That's coming up. October 1st. London. <laughs> Did you know there's another London Soho Walk now? I'm sorry. Yes. What? Yeah. What time? Uh, earlier than ours. Let me hit the internet. <laughs> <laughs> and it's run by the London Photographic Association. Who th- who are they? I don't know. They're not the hybrid boys. I can no, tell you exactly. that much. They're not going to get anyone. Right. So if if you want a, a decent photo walk <laughs> in London. In Soho. Go on to worldwidephotowalk.com. In fact, before we do the promo, what's a photo walk? It's a good question. Well, a photo, a photo walk, walk. If you don't know what it is, I'll tell you what it is. What it is is uh, a group of photographers getting together for largely a social event. It's when you say photographers, mm. every every level of photography. Yeah, absolutely. From your hobbyist uh, with an iPhone, and a, or a compact, or you know anything, right Any, up and right anything, right up to if you've got a Hasselblad. You know, bring a bring a um, you know one of the big bellows. Cameras with yeah. you as well, if you want. Oh, I mean, it might, it might be. It, it, it is a walk, so be prepared to carry it. I found it. Okay, you know, a, um, Regent Street, they're meeting. Mm-hmm. Who do they think they are? Who do you think you are? Check it, make it, move it, make it. Spice Girls reference, huh? No, I got that. Mm. But mm-hmm. uh, bring, bring a camera and a fully charged battery. These are handy information. <laughs> <laughs> You're being a bit of a. Bit of a bitch. I'm a bit bitter. 
Well, I mean, we set the Soho Walk first. Why are they encroaching upon our territory? Yeah, ask Scott. Ask Scott why he uh, authorised it. Did you ask? I didn't. But maybe you should. I don't think Scott authorises it. Last year it was Brad that was running it. I don't know who's running it this year. It was they're it's 10 Jane. A.m. They're Jane. 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. It was Jane at Kelby 1 this year who was, was doing all the authorised. And she was working through the night together. Uh, which is uh, why they had uh, over a thousand cities in a record time. So we're not going to criticise Jane. Trafalgar Square, Nassau, United States. Interesting. Um, so anyway, the photo walk, it's, it's uh, an opportunity for people, like-minded people, yeah. who uh, who love photography and socialising, to get together, to walk, walk around, compare um, compare skills, I suppose. Is, is that the best way? Not to compare, no, share. No, share skills. Share there skills. To, to learn from one another, to advice. explore the city, to make friends. And oh. just have a good time, really. Yeah, basically, we we are going to have a good time. We've it is, yeah, it's basically just a, a walking I've social event I've with cameras. I've organised a thing. I know you have, I'm not and I'm quite anymore. excited about it. I know you can't say anything, I and I don't want say. you to say anything. Either. Right, so we've got prizes. I've organised prizes, but I've organised something else. The prizes themselves are quite cool, actually. The prizes are awesome, but I've organised something else. And I want to tell f- you, and they are I can't from, tell you. They are from uh, a number of our trusted friends, partners, partners. Associates? Well, yeah, both of those things mm. because w- they're our supplier to mm. hybrid photography mm-hmm. and they're people that we work with for. And they are. And then there's all another. All joking aside, there's pretty awesome. Thing. Oh, I know there's another oh, thing. I want to say it. You can't. Okay, so every single person on the walk. You're not going to say it, are you? No. He's getting something. That's that's yeah, that's all we're saying. Don't get your hopes up. No. It's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's not like a there's a there's a cool a gold ingot or anything. There's a cool thing that's happening at the start, basically. So get registered. And the cool is what thing we're is at Bar Italia, and Bar Italia is twenty three Frith Street, Soho West One. Twenty four hour coffee shop. It's a twenty four. It's not twenty four hour. It's is a, it not? It's a long hour coffee. It's okay. about 20, 23 and a half hours. It's about twenty one hours. They okay. shut about four most days. And they're open about six. So. It's fine. Anyway, so um, so really bear in mind that they do the point? bear in mind that they do food and coffee and booze. Do you know I've never been? I've worked in the West End for a vast number of years, and I've never once been into Bar Italia. Okay, you should go. I know. Do you know I've I've been there for dinner a few times. It's it really seems good. like the kind of place that you should really only go at can like I recommend one o'clock f- in the morning. Can I recommend the fruit fondue? The fruit. Fondue. Fruit chocolate fondue. What? In Little Italy, which is their It's sister. chocolate, right? Of course, yeah. Okay. That sounds cool. And they give you a selection but of is it like donkey stuff. It's g- donkey? <laughs> donkey. All oh, right. But it's going to be like a chocolate Fruits, fountain, Fruits, raspberries, right? strawberries, marshmallows. They got it. Chocolate fountain, it. which is it. what? Nanas, uh, we'll, grapes, we'll in, you name it. We'll endorse it now. Hybrid photography. Chocolate fountain. Love a chocolate fountain at a <laughs> wedding. <laughs> 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 We're all over that. Uh, <laughs> so that was... Um, the whole point of what we see, this is the thing, right? We we sit here with a beer, we talk, and and we just chat. We have a rough idea where we're going, but that's it. Um, th- so we're obviously we're talking about the worldwide photo walk, and now we're talking about chocolate. <laughs> so the point is, the chocolate. point is that's why we sit here with a beer because it's casual, it's relaxed. We can just talk. We don't hold back. We're just honest and we're open. And open and honest. Oh. Oh. So you can trust us. Whatever we're talking about, Trust if we know what we're talking about, we'll know, we'll let you know that we know what we're talking about. Just in me. That's a Jungle Book reference there. Cool. Car. Oh, how's your Jungle Book yes, picture coming uh, on? Oh no, sorry. I thought you can ask me something completely <laughs> different. I thought okay. you can ask me about the so VR ha- headset okay, you bought me, with my let birthday. Me give, let me give a link. Okay. Hang on a minute. What? You bought me a VR okay, headset. Okay, let's talk about that, birthday. and then I'll give you a link. That was awesome. Yeah. And the reason I thought you were talking about that is because the video you showed me was. Did you watch the Jungle Book picture? I did. The Jungle Book video. It's awesome. It's cool. So, so you go on. You go onto YouTube. You press the little Google three dots cardboard. Yeah. Icon. Yeah. Put it into this VR headset. And you're in the scene. You're there. I gave it to my son. I, I let my um, three-year-old son have a go, and it was a video of King Louis, who is, of course. Uh, in, in the film played by or voiced by the amazing Christopher Walken mm. uh, and he couldn't believe it he was he was lifting the goggles up like having to look around him thinking that King Louis was yeah, like yeah. in his bedroom yeah, yeah. it was quite cute actually that was cool but no um, what was the other thing you were going to 
Ask me about Jungle Book. Well, the reference is my right, So I I quite enjoy wildlife photography, and I am going to be honest. Like I said, we're open and honest, right? Mm-hmm. Open and honest. I cheat. I quite often. <laughs> I quite often I enjoy going to zoos. Um, some people hate zoos, animals trapped in a cage, whatever. I, I get that, but what I like to do is try and free them in my photography. Mm-hmm. Cute, right? Oh, I like that. So I'm at uh, the Woodland Park Zoo in Seattle. This, this is setting the scene. There are bears. There's brown bears. It is an interesting little point, actually. What's the difference between a brown bear and a grizzly bear? You did tell me this. And my concern is that I didn't find it interesting enough to remember. That's really going to help sell the <laughs> podcast. What's the difference? <laughs> What's the difference between a brown bear and a grizzly bear? You did tell me this, but I can't remember. It's But I know it's really interesting. So there's no difference? Oh. Do you want to know why? Tell me. So if you look at a grizzly bear, they're called grizzly because their face is described as gristly grizzly. It's sort of greyer than the rest of their fur. Okay. And 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 sort of dirty looking, mm. so that's why they're gristly, grizzly. Hey, do you I like see. that? You can have that. Mm. So that's that. Anyway, so I'm in the Woodland Park Zoo and I'm taking pictures of the grizzly bears, mm. and th- one of them ro- walks up onto a rock, and I'm thinking, oh, this is cool. And there was also this jaguar, and there's even oh, right next to the jaguar, there was an American pronunciation guide, and it said J A G dash W A R. Jaguar. It's not. It's jaguar. Jaguar. Not Come jaguar. on, people. Jaguar. So I'm taking pictures of these animals and I'm trying to make them look jungle booky because the jungle book movies come out and and the the posters that I've seen are awesome. The lighting is good and and the tones are good. So I'm trying to emulate my bear picture and my jaguar picture to look like the jungle book. And I think it worked. But anyway, Pete's gone and stole one. Tell him what you've done because it's yeah. awesome. I love it. Yeah, so, oh, I did steal it and and I didn't actually. I was going to ask you beforehand, but I thought nah, nah, I'm just going to go for it. Yeah. But my um my three year old son. Um, he's basically Mowgli. He, is ba- he, he looks the <laughs> he spit looks, of Mowgli. Um, he's uh, half Asian, um, so he's kind of the same complexion as Mowgli. He has long hair like Mowgli, and I put him in a pair of his red shorts, which I tucked the legs up into like, his pants, like Mowgli's little t- t- uh, like his little loincloth yeah. thing that he wears. Uh, and so I shot him in my uh, living room against a white background. Cut him out in Photoshop and put him into Dave's bear picture as Mowgli and, and Balu. Awesome. And I've not quite finished it yet, so I can't. I can't quite share it. I wonder if you sort of puppet walk the bear's face a bit to make it look like you know the pointy nose and the big eyes like mm. Baloo. What do you think? I'll give it a go. It's a good tip. Is it? Well, it's not really a tip. Well, it's a good suggestion. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> You're full of it. Um. So. We need to we need to get back on sort of topics again. We're doing this thing where we go all over the place. Mm-hmm. Your turn. I'm conscious that you've <laughs> turned the laptop away from me. What are we talking about? Um, so we've done the worldwide photo walk. Do we not want to talk anymore about that? Because I feel that, oh, that deserves. Okay, then let's just talk about that. I d- feel that deserves more airtime. PM. Why is it six PM? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I travel. I keep saying this. I travel, and on the first of October, I'll be. On my way back from Svalbard, which is like seventy something degrees north, it's bo- it's in the Arctic Circle. It's where polar bears and walrus live. And Sounds like that's going to be cold. It's going to be freezing. Are you going to so have a I gun? I la- yeah, I'm going to have to. I have to hire a gun, and I have search and rescue insurance. It's a properly dangerous situation, but hopefully, I'll get it under control as much as I can. But anyway, I'm going. Well, to you need to because otherwise, I'm I'm leading the walk on my own. Um, yeah, you might be. Anyway, I'm mm. going almost to the North Pole. That will that will be, I mean that will, that will be what. That's going to be an odd situation for me. What leading the photo walk? Well, no, because on one hand I'll be really upset that you'd have been, you know, eaten by a polar bear. Mm. But on the other hand, like all the attention will be on me yeah. at the walk, which I'll I'll quite enjoy. Yeah. So it's you know it's it's a it's a double edged sword. So what, back, uh, back to the what will I what will I want to happen to the story? Oh, sorry, yeah, go I'll on. be hit, I'll be more or less. D- at the this North is my Pole. internal monologue. Sorry, and to get back <laughs> from the North Pole, I'll be having three flights, and my final flight lands at Heathrow Airport at four p.m. I then have to get as quickly as I can onto the tube. So, but the Central time. London. The thing is, it's a convenient line because it's Piccadilly line to Piccadilly line, Leicester Square, and mm. just walk up, right? You haven't got l- hold luggage either, right? Or checked um, luggage, as as Americans at say. At the moment, I don't. 
Okay. But it depends what I need because it's going to be Because cold. if you have checked luggage... Then it'll take an extra half hour. 45 minutes. My passport's dodgy as well. Mm. That It takes me a while to get through security. That's a whole different story. It genuinely... I can't get through those e-passport gates. Why? I don't know. I can get through them in every other country. Do you know that... Do you know, going on I mean, to that... I'll tell you what. The, here's I a do travel know tip. why it is. Here's a travel it's tip. it's not because of me. <laughs> okay. Here's, oh, I, yeah, I know. Right. As well, actually. But anyway, here's a travel tip. For those e-passports, I have noticed a lot of people, when you stand in the queue... The reason it doesn't work for most people is that as you walk through, you put the you lay your passport down mm-hmm. on the scanner yeah. and you read the sign that says, look at the screen yeah. or look at the camera. Yeah. But what people are doing is looking at the screen yeah. of themselves, yeah. not the camera, yeah. which is about a foot above it. Yeah. And so because of that, it can't read your face properly. Right. And then it fails. So it says, go and join the human queue. But right. if you look at the camera yeah. rather than the screen of yourself, yeah. you'll get through. Travel tip. There it is. Wow. Mm. That was really interesting. I I <laughs> thought that was I thought that was a very, very credible travel tip. Did you look make at it the up? camera? Look at the no, genuinely, because okay. you uh, you you notice because it's happened to me before that the first because it gives you like three attempts I think and you look at the I've looked at the screen mm. and it comes up saying try again so you take the passport out you put it back in yeah. look at the screen again doesn't work try it for the third time and I thought right well I'll look at the camera bang yeah. straight through okay. and I've done that a couple of times to test it yeah and my theory works okay so there you go top travel well, tip I'd love to be able to try it except except I can't get through border control in the UK. Because without a serious amount of questions, mm. <laughs> because of some issue that's not me, is it a situation? It's a very big situation. I tell you, it's an interesting situation. It's a, we'll, did, we'll go. Uh, we'll go I as far it, as to I say. Explained to me by You're a border control officer because I was like, "Look, you can see how many times I come through these borders at various places. I'm totally legit. Why do I get stopped every time?" The problem is, you have a very common name. I have a name that matches closely to someone else that isn't a nice person. So there we go. Hey. So the okay. so the guy, he was like, yeah, cool. Where you been? What you doing? What you up to? And while he's figuring it out. But the computer goes, nope. <laughs> Too close. Nope. Don't like that. Don't open. So anyway. um, My lawyers have told me to say... No. My lawyers have told mm. me not to say mm. that it's David Walliams it's th- it's that's actually causing you problems. It's not him. His name's actually David Williams. Is it? Yeah. Why is it, why is it Williams? Because that. it, it, that's like a stage name, isn't it? Everyone was there it. someone else called David Williams so he couldn't have it? Yeah, from Hobby Photography. <laughs> what? Go on my Facebook, I've got, got a tick and everything. In it? I'm the real hybrid Dave. Have you got a tick? Yeah. It's a grey tick though, not a, not a blue tick. I've got a tick. What's, why, what is the grey tick? I have no idea. Okay. I've got a tick though. <laughs> um... So, uh, as I say, I travel a lot. And I was thinking the other day, here you go, you can have this one. Get into my head with this. I'm sure I'm right. I'd I'd rather not, but let's try anyway. So I was thinking the other day, and I was going to blog about it. When you go abroad, everything's beautiful. Everything's awesome. You pay attention. You look around, you look up, you look at all sorts of stuff. Mm. When you're wandering around London, you've got your head down. You're in the zone, and you're going from A to B, yeah. and you're not looking at much, right? Mm-hmm. And so I was thinking, well, what, what are all these tourists doing here? It's just London. But when I go abroad, but for them it's I'm not doing London. what they're doing. For them, it's not home. So why is it, is it beautiful just because it's different? Or is it beautiful because uh, it's beautiful? Well, the, I mean, there's probably a very... Do you see what I mean? ...psychological point to be made here. It's probably because uh, people have paid... To go that far right, so and they to, need be to get there. their money's worth, and yeah, t- perhaps. Right, but I think also because it beca- kind of your hometown or your home city, wherever you are, just becomes, you know, you walk down the same street every day to go yeah. to work. Yeah. You go to the same cafe yeah. or same place to buy lunch. So it can be as beautiful. Like if you live, I don't know. If you lived, mm. bear with me, in the Grand Canyon, mm-hmm. and every day you woke up in the Grand Canyon and walked through the Grand Canyon. It would just become It'd another just be place. Just the place where you live. And For so instance, it's beautiful, but you don't care anymore. So in London, people who live here don't mm. care, but it is actually beautiful. Of course, it is. I, st- I, I, I. So the beauty is actually the difference. I've always the said is the beautiful. I've always element. said that I don't think 
I don't think it, it matters where wherever I go in the world. Mm. London, I think I would always say that London is the most amazing city in the world. However, mm. that recently, uh, I, I've been having some real issues with New York. Yeah, mm. I want to live there. Okay, I've, c- the reason being, as I've just started, it's taken a while, but I've just started editing. I'm, in fact, I've now f- just finished editing my New York city Isn't photos. It's an amazing place. And it's just like, the pictures we got at the top of the Rockefeller Center. Yeah. Um, I haven't started them yet. I've just finished, I've just uh, I've attacked a bit of Norway. I've done a bit of New York. Mm. I've done loads of Canada mm. with the wildlife. But I haven't, I've, there's a few that I, I need, I've got in my head I want to do. Do you know that right? Um, when before we went, we were looking at where we'd like to take pictures because Pete only had twenty four hours, and um, was it Silver? No, where was it? Across the water, New Jersey, where you saw the and the woman in the red dress. That picture. Yeah. That we thought. Anyway, I went there. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. And there was this couple. I was like, "Can I take your picture, please? I'll send you a copy." And they said, "Yeah, cool." And they've emailed me, and I feel really guilty because I haven't been able to give them their picture yet because I haven't edited it. So I'm going to have to crack on and do that. Um, but they were a really nice couple, and mm. I was directing them, and they were all over it. It was fantastic. Was like a complete stranger coming up to you in a city and saying, hi, I'm a photographer. I want to get this shot. Can you be the models for it? And they were all over it. They loved were they, it. Were they good looking? Skipping yeah, they were right. Yeah. I mean, she, she was that, could, that could be a potential. Were they married? No. That could be a potential. Destination get, wedding. I've got a friend in New York. I'll get him on it. Mm-hmm. Peter. Peter. Get him on it. He's on it. So uh, my point is, anyway, we're going all over the place. Again, difference is beautiful. The thing about cities that you visit, about the, the attractiveness, is the fact that they're different. They're things you've not seen before. But I don't think... So if I'm a travel photographer... But do you mean do you mean places you go abroad or places you go away everywhere. from... Difference is beautiful. Yeah, That's so you can still so be within your country. As a country. travel photographer... If I'm shooting something that I'm familiar with, it's completely different to if I'm f- shooting something that I'm not familiar with. Mm. And the thing that I'm not familiar with, I'm actually going to spend a lot more See, time that, trying that to compose. And that, that to me, that, 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 that takes me that back to when I was around 15, 16. And my brother, who is eight years older than me, would have been around uh, 23, 24. And I was going up to London with my then girlfriend. And and I was obviously saying to him and my mum how excited I was and how I, how I was looking forward to kind of seeing all the touristy sites and yada, yada, yada. And he turned around to my mum and dryly said, uh, and he'd been working in London for years by this point, and dryly said, I wish I was still impressed by the sights of London. And I think that goes to your point that although I'd been to you're, London before... Because you're so familiar with it. Exactly. I'd been to London before, yeah. but only a few times. Yeah. So to you, you're a visitor, but exactly. to here. But now, having worked in London pretty much my entire adult life. Yeah, I, I get off the tube now at Leicester Square and kind of my head's down and I'm just, I know where I'm going and I, I just kind of forge you my way. get on with it. Exactly. Which isn't what we're going to be doing on October the 1st. No, because we know our way around and we can point out the little quirks. Here's one. Go on. There's seven noses in Soho. There is. And if you find all seven, you get eternal wealth, apparently. You get a ton of wealth. Eternal wealth. Oh, eternal wealth. So, but here's the catch. You know, all those like mythical stories come from years ago. Mythology. Years. Like, no, I'm talking like <laughs> years ago, like Aladdin mm. years ago. Alibaba. Like Stonehenge years ago. Arabian Nights. Th- these noses went up in the sort of 70s. <laughs> 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 so I don't know who. Who made? I know. I know one of them certainly. I know where five are. I know one of them I found on five. Admir- Admiralty Arch. That's not one of them. That's not in Soho. Eh? Exactly. They are within Soho, within the confines of Oxford Street. Well, then I have Charing no Cross Road, idea. Shaftesbury Avenue, and Regent Street. I have no idea. There's one on Darbley Street. Darbley. There's one on. Hey, why don't we not do this now? What? And we'll just see if people can find them. Okay. At the Seven hashtag WWPW 2016. London. London. Soho. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag WWPW 2016. London. London. That's our hashtag. There's a Facebook group and there's a Flickr and group. And there's a Flickr group. So people can share their stories. Get on it. Stay in touch with each other. Stay in touch with us and stuff. Mm. And you know, it, it's cool because last year it, it was a situation whereby... Situation. We, we th- well, <laughs> it's cool because last year we, we set these social media groups up 
uh, with the intention of people staying in touch, and they did. Mm. And so I'm happy with that. We still talk to some people. I follow them on Instagram and Flickr, and Facebook. And that's the beauty, as we spoke about last time, so that's cool. the beauty of it's a cool social, social media, experience. is that bring you don't it, need to bring physically into reality. see people. And sometimes, thankfully, that's a good thing. <laughs> but I have to see you. Mm. Would, I mean, technically, we don't. We could do this on Skype. No. Because mm. we'd get it wrong. We would. Anyway, so thank you very much for joining us. Thank for you for joining us. Episode two of the Hybrid Podcast. Which is actually podcast. the third podcast. But yes, thank you for joining <laughs> us. <laughs> See you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.